Good morning, ladies. C++ is an object-oriented general purpose language that can be used for just about anything in the world of software. That is, if you're willing to write that much code. C++ is more than twice as old as me, and for that reason, I'm calling it the grandfather of programming languages. I can already hear you in the comments. This guy's an idiot. C is the grandfather of all languages. I want to oil you up. I'm not so sure about that last one. But yes, C is literally the reason C++ is even a thing. But C is 52 years old. That shit is the great grandfather of all languages. C++ is a derivative of C. Like Python, C is a procedural programming language. Basically, it follows and executes a list of instructions given to it. It doesn't really have many features like classes and objects beyond that. So C++ is everything C programmers never had. C++ has object-oriented, generic, and functional features, but it also has the facilities for low-level memory management and other nerd shit. C++ can be somewhat scary for new programmers, and I totally understand why. One of those reasons being that it's a compiled language, and this can be somewhat hard to understand for new programmers. This is in contrast to some newer languages like Python or JavaScript, which are interpreted languages. Meaning there is no compilation step, and you can just run the source code files. Pretty simple, right? But C++ must be converted to a .exe file before it can be ran on the host machine. Actually, you would compile to an object file? Yeah, that's correct, but I really don't feel like getting into all that. Here's the main function of a C++ file. Wait, hold on, let me commit a war crime really quick. Ah, there we go. Much better. To write the main function, it is public static void main string. Ah, just kidding, I almost got you there. The main function is just a function called main, and it returns an integer, which is the exit code. You can also optionally give it parameters, which can be passed into a command shell environment when running the compiled code. C++ is known for being similar to Java. Well, I guess technically it's the other way around, but whatever, cry about it. This relationship is mostly tied to the syntax though. To initialize a variable, you must give it a type, a name, and either declare some data or leave it as an empty initialization. And this is where C++ can start to get scary for beginners. In other languages, if we don't declare some data when initializing a variable, and we try to use the data or print it to the console, it will probably just say null or zero. But in C++, if we try to use an empty initialization, we get, well, garbage. This is exactly what I was saying earlier about memory management. C++ does not care at all if you initialize memory properly. If you do it correctly, great, your program runs. If you leave some values null, your program explodes. And God forbid you exceed the memory allotment, whoa, we know what happens then. For anyone who's currently learning C++, you should probably mute the video for the next 60 seconds, because we're gonna be talking about pointers and references. In C++, you are able to refer to the address of a variable in memory, which can actually be very useful when used properly. For instance, here we have two functions that modify the parameter that are passed into it. But as we can see, one of them returns an integer and one of them returns void. But why is that? I know you all already know the answer, but just go along with it, okay? For the method that returns the integer, we pass in the parameter, the function does its calculations, and it returns the new value. This is great and all, except it's not, and it's shit. Look at the void function. As we pass in a parameter, we take a reference to the variable in question. We do this by denoting the parameter with an ampersand. This means that when we modify the parameter inside of the function body, we are actually modifying the original variable instead of a new copy of the variable. So we don't actually need to return a new variable back to the caller. Now let's also talk about pointers. Pointers are somewhat similar to references, as they store the address in memory of any variable that we want. So here we've initialized a variable and a pointer. The variable is the data that we're storing, but the pointer is holding the address in memory to the variable and its data. Make sense? So if we wanted to print the variable to the console using the pointer, we would dereference the pointer by using an asterisk, which would return the actual variable. Thank God that guy's done talking. C++ is great, sometimes. But if you want to learn to code or just about computer science in general, I highly recommend learning C or C++ as it teaches you a lot about memory management and just how software works in general, which are things that you'll need to know to break into the industry. But the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to C++ is what do I think about it? 7.2 out of 10, segmentation fault.